Good afternoon, Fed Phoenix fam. So, let's talk FRPs. Um, FRPs are financial responsibility plan, financial repayment plan, something of that nature. But but everyone calls them FRPs. Um, and you may be wondering what this is. Now, first off, when you are convicted of a federal felony, right? What you're actually convicted of, not what you're initially charged with. Um, you will be charged a hundred dollar per felony assessment fee. Now, what I did is immediately after sentencing, I went to the clerk's office in the federal court building, paid my hundred dollar fee, got my receipt, and then proceeded to, to go downstairs, show my probation officers so they could put it in my file, and then I had to go um, to the marshal's office to go through all the processing or whatever before I left the courthouse. Um, you know, so they, they have my DNA and fingerprints and whatever, um, and then go wait for my designation letter, right? But a lot of people have FRPs. Um, pretty much if you're, if you're required to pay any type of restitution. So these are usually financial crimes or crimes that involve some type of property damage. Um, more often than not, financial crimes. And uh, a lot of people in federal prison, a lot of regular schmegular kind of people, you know, middle class, lower middle class, upper middle class, had FRPs in the millions, the millions. Because you got to think when the feds calculate what you owe financially, right? The restitution. Um, a lot of times it's very similar to drug cases where let's say you, you have a kilo of some type of drug and they say, oh, but it has fentanyl in it. So now we're going to call it a kilo of fentanyl. And oh, the converted drug weight is, and now all of a sudden you went from being responsible for two pounds of drugs to being responsible for 2,000 pounds of drugs. Um, very, very common thing. And I think FRPs are very similar. Um, in the sense that I've seen a lot of people that, you know, the actual cash money that they made from their crimes, you know, crime and, you know, white collar type stuff, the FRP actually exceeded that amount. Um, so this is going to matter when you get to prison. But what you're going to need to do, what is smart to do, is before you go to prison, at your sentencing hearing, your lawyer, not you, your lawyer, needs to specific, because the only thing you're going to say at your sentencing hearing is a whole lot of, yeah, I understand, yeah, I understand, yeah, I understand. Um, thank the courts for their time, which is funny. And then, um, you know, when you give allocution, that's your fall on your sword moment. That's not your ask for favors moment. So your lawyer needs to be the one at the sentencing to say, hey, you know, to prevent undue hardship on this person's family or dependents, um, can we please have a, uh, a clause in the JNC and the judgment and committal um, specifying that financial repayment will be, you know, um, restitution will be uh, suspended until after incarceration. It's a very smart thing to do. It's a very simple thing to do. Unfortunately, a lot of my clients come to me after they've been sentenced and they had financial crimes and they didn't know to do this and their lawyer didn't care. The lawyer doesn't care about how miserable, you know, your prison stay is. And he certainly doesn't care about what he can do to mitigate that through the process of sentencing and, and plea deals and such. So with that in mind, if you do not have that deferred, if you have a, a restitution you owe and you did not get it in your, in your sentencing documentation that it was deferred until after your incarceration, the first thing you're going to do when you get, when you get to prison or even before you get to prison, right, is you're, you need to either have your lawyer motion the judge um, or you need to write the judge yourself and say, hey, you know, I, this was an oversight that this wasn't, you know, brought up or mentioned. Can can this please be added? Can my judgment and committal be amended that I don't owe, you know, that I, that my payment on restitution is deferred until after my period of incarceration to not cause unnecessary hardship on my loved ones because while incarcerated, I'll obviously be mostly at their mercy to, to survive, you know, with hygiene items and food and, and things of that nature. Um, then what's going to happen when you get to prison is, uh, they're going to determine what your FRP payment is going to be. And there is a certain amount of discretion in this. And I'm going to talk about a, uh, a particular case. Um, of course, no specific identifying information, but just a general thing. So there's a lady I know, um, I don't know. There's a lady in a social media platform I'm in who was saying, you know, my, my daughter's restitution, it was like, uh. I forget what she said initially was like a hundred and you know dollars or something a month but she had her team meeting recently and now they're saying that her restitution is going to be like 225 dollars a month 
and collectively what we as a family and her friends are able to send her is about 300 a month and we don't even want to send her no money if that if they're not going to let her have it if they're just going to take it all okay first off she has a debt that she's going to be paying possibly for the rest of her life her tax refunds will get seized by the feds every year no matter how many kids she has no matter how much money it is um to go towards that at some point they may decide to seize some assets to get their money um, any type of employment she has for the rest of her life, including self-employment, there will be wages garnished because of this FRP, this restitution she owes the feds. This debt ain't going nowhere at all. But, but, if they, you can show a consistent pattern of making payments, you know, and the larger the better, the more likely you'll be given some consideration if there comes a time where you need to go in front of your federal judge, you know, years down the line and say, listen, I have a parent dying of cancer or, you know, I've lost my job and I'm, I'm going to be out of work for a few months because I have an injury, you know, or I've, I've been in a car accident. Can we defer my, my restitution for a period of a couple months or even a year or so to allow me to survive this storm? And the judge will be a lot more considerate of that if you can show a, a established history of regular payments, first off. So that isn't the prison taking her money and going to the gambling joint and having a good old time with it. You're not sending money that's being taken and... And kind of squandered for whatever you're actually uh you know creating a situation where she owes less collectively to the feds and where she has a payment history when she gets out of prison with the feds that makes her a, a candidate for for possible necessary future considerations so but uh so this person said you know my uh my my loved one is gets about you know about 325 you know a month from friends and family and at the prison job, they only make about 25 bucks, right? So that's about 350 a month on average. Um, some months, a little more, a little less, but we'll, we'll say average out 350. And they're telling this person that their FRP is going to be um, $250 a month. Here's the thing. Your FRP payment, how this is going to be determined, and this is going to include monies that you earned through your prison job. This is going to include money you put on your books before you went to prison, money you brought into prison that went on your books, and monies that friends and family and loved ones or even strangers are adding to your commissary account. Those are all considered your income while you're an inmate. Um, so what's going to happen is they're going to take the average, and they'll, they'll review this periodically every six months or so, five, six months, but the average monthly, so the total divided by, let's say, five months, six months, whatever it is, um, you, but and find your average monthly income. And the only, according to the FRP, which is a 17 or 18 page document, the uh, Bureau of Prisons FRP statement plan, you know, all that kind of stuff, which if you're going to have one, I advise reading it. Not that it's going to matter a whole lot when you get to prison, but it's, it's always good to, if you have to use admin remedies or motion your judge or whatever, to be in a position to actually quote um, you know, what things are supposed to be and, and the source of that, and you're asking for any kind of consideration. But they, they, they typically let you keep about $75 a month and all the difference they take. So in this case, I think it was actually 325 a month was her average. They were wanting to keep, they, they're going to keep, it ain't even wanting, they're going to keep 250 a month for her FRP payment, leaving her $75 a month to, to survive. Um, and the family was very upset and they're like, we're not sending money for this, whatever. And here's what needs to go into consideration at that point, because clearly these people did not make sure that the FRP would be deferred until after incarceration or they wouldn't be in this position, right? When she got to prison, you know, when she had her first team meeting within 30 days, was aware she was going to have an FRP and it could go up or down, did not one immediately write her judge or have a lawyer motion the judge to get this suspended until post incarceration and was not did not make an effort to understand how this works well enough to know that having 300 bucks a month added to your books is going to meet and mean an frp in the two 200 dollar price range and where this becomes a very slippery and dangerous situation is let's say the family says you know what we're not paying it we're not paying crap we're going to give we're going to send a hundred dollars a month end of story um, you know, and they can just take 75. Well, until her next team meeting, which is probably another six months, maybe a year, maybe three months, I don't know how much longer she has. But every month that the current FRP amount, that 250, is not in her commissary account for them to collect, she will be in FRP refusal. 
This means she can lose her access to phone calls, um, commissary shopping, or get on commissary restriction where she can only spend like $25 a month or bi-weekly on commissary, period, no matter how much money is on her books. She can lose good time. If she's getting FSA credits um, to take, you know, earning them to take time off the back end of her sentence in prison, um, they can make her FSA ineligible. She certainly will not even be earning any, any FSA credits while an FRP refusal, because that's what it's called, FRP refusal. So even if you, the inmate, have no control over the fact that your family has said, listen, we're not paying into this crap like that, it doesn't matter. You, the inmate, are responsible to keep that cash stream steady. And if you fail to do that, these are the consequences. Now, you may be wondering in that situation, how do you get the FRP lowered? Um, of course, initially, if you haven't already done it, write the judge or pay a lawyer, because I know some of you have a lot more, more money than, than most of us. Pay a lawyer to motion and judge to get the, F, the, the restitution suspended until post-incarceration, number one. Number two, you're going to need to read to educate yourself or someone very close to you who can ar articulate and understand things well needs to educate themselves to help you. The full 17, 18 page, I think it's 18 page, FRP, BOP structured document. And take notes and figure out what applies and what doesn't apply and what information is useful for, for your situation. Then what I would do is I would write a budget. And I would say maybe $50 a month for hygiene, $100 a month for food, $50 a month for, you know, email and other true link services, making copies, etc. So that's $200. I would, I would um, put together a budget. I may even attach a commissary sheet or something to show exactly that the, these are legitimate amounts. I would say $200 a month is my reasonable budget while I do my time. And I'm not trying to evade making restitution payments. I understand that's part of the, what, what's going on here and, I, and I'm more than happy to comply. Um, I wanna comply. I wanna make you know my, my, my debt lower and everyone else's job easier. I, absolutely, why not? However, realistically, $75 a month I, I would, would make my, my conditions here a lot more difficult. And because my actual conditions would be more difficult, this would create a, a psychological burden. And additionally, this creates a demand, a burden on my loved ones that they have to now ante up this amount every month. And if they don't, I, I suffer and I may be in prison longer and, my, and say, hey, you know, my people don't really have the means to maintain this indefinitely um and i would say you know 200 a month is what i need to get by my income is about 325 a month i i i would ask that consideration be given and my frp amount be dropped to 125 or 150 dollars a month and i feel that that's reasonable and you know with that in mind if my family's going through a difficult time and they can't put the normal amount of money in my books they normally do um, you know, I don't have to fear disciplinary action for something that is beyond my control. Because being that that is currently the case, it is causing me an incredible amount of duress. And I understand no one probably really cares about my duress because I'm an inmate. But, you know, I'm really, as a, as a human being, as a person, I'm really trying to, to work with you guys here to make this a situation where we both get what we want and, and I can get through this time the best that I can. Um, and I would write that up, attach as much supporting documentation as you can, um, including possibly letters, preferably notarized, from your loved ones in the free world saying that they cannot, you know, guarantee that they will definitely be able to contribute the same amount of money to your commissary account. And they, they don't want you punished for, for their own economic difficulty. Um, and put all this together and you're going to do your BP-9, first step of the admin remedies. Um, I wouldn't really stress a whole lot of attaching a whole lot of evidence to the BP-9 because it's it's the warden is not going to go against her staff. So that's going to get denied. But it's unfortunately part of the process you have to go through. Once the warden denies that, then here's where things might actually shake out for you. Now, with each level of the admin remedy process, like my admin remedy video recommends, you want to attach copies of all the previous remedies you've done all of the responses and any evidence or attachments you had with those. So by the time you get to the 11, you're sending a whole manila envelope kind of document to Washington. But uh, yeah, on the 10 is where you really want to attach your proof and make a strong argument. And, um, 
and you're going to pursue this. And the admin remedy process from beginning to end can be as short as six, nine months. More often than not, it's about a year, sometimes more. And I have a video specifically on admin remedies if you would like to, to better learn about those. Now, if you're saying, well, is there anything else I can realistically do to help buffer as I'm going through these remedies and, and petitioning my judge? And Yes. So... Unfortunately, this person, their income is about three twenty-five dollars a month. After the FRP, they're left with $75 a month, which is, is a pretty tight budget as an inmate. Um, it's doable. Don't get me wrong. I've seen people survive in prison $30, $40 a month. You know. Um, what I would do is I would tell my people, okay, let's, let's, let's whittle this down. Okay, let's send $20 less a month, and I will, I will live off $50 a month, $55 a month. Um, and I'll just have to budget myself very well. And then I would all, what I would also do is at the inmate at that point, since this person obviously has made no effort to be self-sustaining in prison other than their required prison job, is I would figure out a dang hustle. Whether it's braiding hair, and if you don't know how, so there will be plenty of people who will be happy to teach you just to hang out with you. Braid hair, draw pictures, write poems, write letters, start researching law and helping people with basic things like admin remedies. Um, heck, you can offer to clean people's cubes for a fee. I mean, there's a thousand things you can do in prison that are not illegal, that do not involve you potentially occurring, incurring further charges um, to make a little extra money. And what you're not going to do, as I've mentioned in other videos, what you're not going to do is when, okay, so you just did $20 worth of work for someone or whatever, tell them, oh, you know, have your, your best friend send my mama a cash app or put money on my books. That's reckless and that can cause more problems than it's worth. What you're going to do is your payment for these things you do for people, you're going to want to, to barter. You're going to want them to pay you in commissary. So if you did $10 worth of work, you give them a $10 commissary list. That's their bill. That's what they pay you. Um, and ultimately, you want to get to a point if you have an FRP, until, especially until it's, you can get it deferred. Um, you know, from, from being active while you're incarcerated, you know, get restitution deferred till after you really want to make pretty much everything you need other than the things that the other inmates can't do that you only want to let your people do, like put money on your books for, for your email and, and things like that. Um, you know, all your commissary, which is, you know, 98% of all your spending, you want to do, you want to put yourself in a position where you are trading goods or services with other inmates to cover those costs and where your family doesn't have to put that money up anymore. You know what I mean? Because then you're just in a better situation. And now you've established relationships that if you end up in FRP refusal in the meantime, you're still not going to go without coffee, creamer, and deodorant because you got you some hustles and you're putting in the work and building the ties and, and the network to be self-sustaining if you have to be while you're incarcerated. And even if you want to like buy a slice of cheesecake off another inmate, which... There's no real cheese in it, and it's icky nasty, just saying. A lot of people like it, though, you know. But what you would do is that slice of cheesecake is, you know, about $2.50, $3 maybe. You know, maybe $2, depending on where you're at, how big it is, whatever. Um, you're going to pay for stuff like that with commissary is your currency, period. From that point moving forward, other than for the email, and if you occasionally want to download a song, that requires true links, or if you need a copy card to make copies as you're going through all this admin remedy stuff, whatever. Um, but you want to make um, commissary your currency. That is really the goal there. Now, once you've accomplished, whether it be through, you know, getting the FRP amount, amount lowered through the admin remedy process, or if you've gotten your judge to, to waive it until after your incarceration, then go ahead. Your family wants to send 300 bucks a month for you to you know, live high on the hog by prison standards, but they just don't want the prison or, or really the federal government getting any of their money. Tell them, go ahead, open up the floodgates because mama, mama's get, mama gets to spend, you know, we're in Vegas, baby. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty much, you know, what you need to know and what you want to do if you have an FRP or if you're going to have an FRP. So that's just something that, that I wanted to put out there real quick because I realized I didn't have a video on it. Um, as always, my Cash App and PayPal will be in the description if you'd like to donate to the channel. I would greatly appreciate that. Um, as is a link to the merch line, if you'd like to get yourself a Fed Phoenix tank top, coffee cup, whatever, um, I would truly appreciate that as well. Um, and my email will be in the description also so that you can contact me if you need to at any point for any reason. 
So with that, good day, God bless, and whatever you're going through, it is a slice of your life, and you will get through it because you have to.